Hey guys and gals, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. If you love the Second Amendment, then smash that subscribe button right down below. It's a big red rectangle. Doesn't cost you anything. Just tells YouTube you value the Second Amendment. We have a bill that was submitted to remove suppressors from the NFA. Yes. And it's called the Shush Act. We've seen it before. I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to tell you what uh, the representative who submitted it said, and look, we got something, I got something I want to ask you too on this, and I want your input. Um, this could be good, but, uh, we'll see. Now, first, you've heard me talking about precious metals and telling you that the experts were calling for record high gold. Well, it's here. Gold has broken through the $2,300 an ounce level, and it might not stop there. Uh, those same experts are calling for it to reach $3,200 a gold, $3,200 an ounce for gold or higher, and silver is rising as well. Uh, I bought my gold and silver from Lear Capital last year, and I'm, I'm up 21% on that purchase thus far. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's clear that uh, the more money the government prints, guys and gals, the less value it has. And since 2020, every dollar in our wallets has lost 24% of its purchasing power, which is why I buy gold and silver. And I hope you will too, because it holds value and it can increase. It has had value throughout the entirety of its existence since it was uh, discovered and it's not going to change buy some gold and silver and start your collection now call my friends at lear capital 1-800-260-5075 or head over to leargg.com and ask if they still have that 3200 dollars an ounce gold report that i've been telling you about it's good reading give them a call today 1-800-260-5075 again 1-800-260-5075 or head over to leargg.com. Thanks to Lear Capital. All right, so the Shush Act was reintroduced yesterday. Um, first, I'm going to give you the quotes from Representative Bob Good, who uh, submitted this. He also submitted the previous version. And let's go from there. Now, Representative Good, who is from Virginia, introduced the Silencers Helping Us Save Hearing Act, or the Shush Act, which would deregulate suppressors at the federal level and preempt state law that regulates taxes or prohibits the possession of suppressors. Suppressors are a firearm accessory that helps ensure safety by protecting hearing, limiting recoil, and perfecting aim. Now, Representative Good said this, I oppose any form of regulation or tax on the people's right to keep and bear arms. No constitutional right should be at risk due to public opinion or subject to regulatory and tax burdens. These rights certainly extend to the procurement of safety accessories for firearms. My legislation would eliminate the overly complicated and antiquated process for acquiring suppressors and ensure that those purchases are no longer subject to federal regulation. And we have a quote from Hunter King, who's the Director of Political Affairs at NAGR, the National Association for Gun Rights, and said, suppressors are accessories and should be treated just like magazines, scopes, or gun stocks. Treating an accessory the same as a gun sets a bad precedence for anti-gun legislators to further regulate other accessories in the future. There's no reason they should be subjected to the Brady registration scheme. We're happy and privileged to be able to work with Rep. Good on this legislation. Aiden Johnson, who is the Director of Federal Affairs for Gun Owners of America, said, we applaud Rep. Good for his leadership on the issue of suppressors as hearing loss is an easily avoidable yet well-documented issue in the shooting community. The National Firearms Act regulations on suppressors are an unconstitutional infringement and should be abolished. We urge Congress to act and empower millions of Americans to protect their hearing while exercising their Second Amendment rights. They also put on here, currently firearms are regulated under the National Firearms Act. This requires individuals to obtain approval and register their suppressor with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, as well as pay a $200 tax that is required for most NFA items. The delay someone experiences when purchasing a suppressor can last up to a year or longer. Currently, there are seven co-sponsors. You can see them there. And like I said with the quotes, NAGR and GOA are supporting this. Now, from there, uh, the, the, the new bill that he is going to reintroduce hasn't 
been reintroduced from what I can see yet. So what I did was pull up his previous version that was in the previous session of Congress. It's going to say the same thing. Here it is on the screen. You can see the short title is the Shush Act. Silencers help us save hearing act. And it says, in general, except as otherwise provided in this subsection, the amendment made by this section shall take effect on the date of the enactment of this act. One thing that will change is the date that's in this part. It says, in the case of the tax imposed by section 5811 of such code, the amendment made by this section shall apply with respect to transfers after whatever the new date that they will put in there. My guess is it'll be something like October of 2024, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. Then it says section 5841 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 is amended by adding at the end the following. Firearm silencers. A person acquiring or possessing a firearm silencer in accordance with chapter 44 of title 18 of the United States Code shall be treated as meeting any registration and licensing requirement for the National Firearms Act as in effect on the day before the date of the enactment of the subsection with respect to such silencer. Here's the preemption on certain state laws. Section 927 of Title 18 USC is amended by adding at the end the following. Notwithstanding the preceding sentence, a law of a state or a political subdivision of a state that as a condition of lawfully making, transferring, using, possessing, or transporting a firearm silencer in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce imposes a tax on any such conduct or a making, record keeping, or registration requirement with respect to a firearm silencer shall have no force or effect. Long and the short of it, that's long speak for saying it'll remove sil silencers from the NFA. And right away, some people are being like, why are you calling it a silencer? That's the actual name they're invented under and registered under, trademarked under. It's what they are in federal law, all the federal code. We just call them suppressors, but it's just the silencer. It's a muffler. Um, but this would remove them from the NFA and treat anybody who lives in a, who, anybody, any state that would regulate that on top of it, that would be null and void as well. And like I said in the beginning, that date, as far as transfers that were already made prior to this act going into effect, they would have to figure out, uh, you'd be reimbursed that. So that date would change. But let's get down to the brass tax of it. Uh, should this law be a thing? Unfortunately, yes. We, sh we, sh we need to force the government to stop regulating a muffler. They don't regulate mufflers on cars, yet here we are because of Hollywood. And sh does paying the government $200 uh, basically of a bribe tax make anything less dangerous or more safe for you? No, it doesn't. It's just a stealing scheme like everything else our government does. Um, it, a lot of people say taxation is theft. It's actually not, it's extortion. Because if you don't pay your taxes, they threaten you with what? Imprisonment, that's extortion. Um, so this needs to be done. I'm, gl I'm glad that Representative Good is resubmitting this. Here is where I give you the brutal honesty and the truth. Um, will we have enough votes to get it through the House? Quite possibly, yes. You'll remember that a couple versions of this bill have been around. The Shush Act was in the last version. Uh, the Hearing Protection Act was actually, we actually had enough votes to pass that. And then the day before the vote was supposed to happen, that's when the shooting at the Republican baseball game practice took place, when Steve Scalise was, was shot uh, several times, and so were other people. Every time this gets close, something happens. Will we get it through the House? I think we could. Just as it sits right now, I think we could. Do we get 60 votes in the Senate? I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't think so. It's still uh, controlled by the, uh, the evil empire, the Democrat Party. Does Joe Biden sign this? No, it doesn't. However, there are there is a certain strategy to some of this stuff that a lot of people might not understand or even know about. So I'll, I'll throw it out there. And I want you, this is what I want your input on. Because I obviously know that you're going to agree that silencers shouldn't be under the NFA. That's obvious. But here's where I want your input. Should we pressure our legislators on both sides of the aisle, regardless of who they are, and, you know, more specifically, obviously, the Republicans, 
Should we pressure them to support these similar type laws or, or bills like this, the, the Hearing Protection Act, the, the Shush Act, or let's say national reciprocity? Knowing that that will put pressure on the, the GOP as a whole to get some stuff maybe moving and realize there's actual support for this stuff, but knowing it's gonna hit a brick wall. Or do you think that is not beneficial? That is something I'm pitching to you all. It is a strategy that has been used for, for, for eons here in this country, is even if you don't have the votes to get it all the way through, you force it through, you force people to the fire when they always say, you know, I support the Second Amendment, but well, you get them to vote on it, whether it's in committee, or you get them to vote on the House floor, and then you can use that failure to vote for something, or the fact that they did vote for something, as a tool, one way or another, come the election. I want your input on that. What do you think? And I, I really, really want to know what my viewing base thinks about that. So, riddle me this, Batman. Do we, do we see value? Do you see value in pushing these bills, knowing they don't stand a chance of getting signed into law, even if we could magically get it through the Senate? If so, why? If not, why? There is no wrong answer on this, and I want to see what your answers are. Y'all have a great day. Please help this channel succeed with this algorithm that has been turned up a lot. All of the Second Amendment channels you watch, we're all experiencing this. We all talk. YouTube is putting the screws to the information, so you are going to have to help those channels you watch get the signal out. It's really easy. It doesn't take a lot. It takes about nine seconds of your life. You hit the like button, you share it, you subscribe to the channel, make a comment. That tells YouTube's algorithm, this is something people like, and that's helping us get the word out. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your, your, uh, your support. Appreciate y'all. Can't wait to see your comments. Have a great day. Take care.